A top 10 clash tonight on North Metro TV and high school girls hockey from the Ice House. Fogarty Arena, the site of part two between the Cougars and the Bengals for the 2017-2018 girls hockey season. Good evening, J.W. Cox alongside John Hatton. Alex Zappa is ringside with our entire North Metro TV crew. And for the second time, we train our cameras on this rivalry between Bengals and Cougars. And John, latest polls out, have the Cougars at number two the best season that they have had so far in this Christina King era. Oh, absolutely. They've jumped two spots from a week ago after being number four. Blaine lost those two spots. They went from six to eight. And the difference tonight might be who's available because Centennial didn't have too much trouble first time around against Blaine. But they might have a little bit tougher time tonight without their top scorer. If Gabby Hughes not playing because of the flu and she will get a little bit of help in that starting line or the starting line will get a little bit of help from Summer Francis just a freshman for this team Francis though well versed in this robbery already last time she had some success against the Bengals well it's a big task for a young lady just a freshman to step in to take over for the top scoring player on this team one of the top scoring players in the state year in and year out over the last several so She'll get help from her line mates, no doubt about that. But hopefully she's not trying to be Gabby Hughes. She's just trying to contribute and be a good line mate here tonight. And that'll help Centennial have success. Yeah, it won't just be the freshman if they're going to make up for that. person who knows that best, fifth-year head coach Christina King, caught up with her own Alex Zappa. In the state of hockey, being the coach of the Centennial Cougars, what's it like to go up against the Blaine Bagels twice a year? We love it. I mean, it's one of the games that the girls look forward to every single year. And for a lot of our seniors, it's their last time being able to play Blaine at their place. And uh, they're just hoping to make the most of it. Last year, the Blaine Bengals beat you guys twice. This year, you swept them, I should say, 3-0 win on your home ice. Now here in Blaine territory, what would it mean to take the win home again? Obviously, it'd mean, it would mean a lot. And that's our ultimate goal. But we understand it's a process. we got to play three full periods. and. Just kind of let the game go as it as it does and if we come out with a win and we play our hearts out and we do well then we're happy and if we play well and we lose we're you know we, we still got things to work on so either way it's good but obviously we're hoping for a win good start of advice thanks for your time thank you as far as the other side for the Bengals, as the Cougars get announced to the crowd here, John, Gabby Rosenthal, she's at the other end of the spectrum from the freshman Francis she's a senior she's been through a number of these battles and her success this year has coincided right alongside with when the Bengals have played their best hockey. And they're going to look for her to be a big contributor again tonight. They have their best games. They're 6-1 and one when she gets a goal. The record not quite so nice when she doesn't. So Rosenthal, a key cog for Blaine for several years. And it feels like we've just been watching these same players over and over again. But this could be the last time. This is the last time for the rivalry during the regular season. So uh, relish in it, and hopefully we'll get another good one tonight. And hopefully we get another one down the road because, yeah, you're only guaranteed the regular season, but these two teams could meet in Section 5. Head coach Steve Geiger has been to Section 5 a number of times, taking his team to the state tournament. He also caught up with Alex. Steve, last year was a banner year in this program's history, a second-place finish at the Exxon Energy Center. but. Some good players left, a little bit of a transition from last year to this year. What have been those differences from the 2017 team to now this year in 2018? Well, it's been a big transition for us, especially at D. Uh, we lost that? five of our six starting D. Um, we had one, one returner, Rachel Lentner. And then we actually moved Deanna Lemire back this year. She was a third line forward for us. Um, and then we have uh, Lauren Dristy, who, you know, ha has come in and done a nice job. And then we have a, a freshman with Peyton Perrin in the lineup. So, I mean, the learning process for them has had to be sped up, and we're, we're, we're still a process of work there. But, um, you know, forwards, we're, we're not as much depth as we've had. You know, the run of our scoring is coming from our first line. Um, last year, our third line was very good, and we could play them against other teams' first lines and, and free up our first line against uh, other teams' first and second line, or second and third lines. And we don't have quite that speed or tenacity right now. Mm -hmm. And we're young, but... You know, we're, we're, we're taking some lumps. We, we still have a long ways to go. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of issues that we're having with the passing and things like that right now. So we're still trying to get through that. Quickly, tell me a little bit about how you fix the trend. It's been sweeping the last two years. One team takes both games in the regular season. Centennial took the first one this year. How do you prevent that from happening tonight? 
Well, I mean, when you play them, it's always shut down Hughes and Linzer, uh, obviously. And uh, last year, or last time we played them, we had, you know, give them credit, they scored, but we had some really bad defensive breakdowns. So, you know, we have to avoid that. And that's been, you know, that's been our thing lately. We're, we're giving up some goals that we shouldn't. And it's not one person making a mistake. We'll have four or five and sometimes six people uh, that are making a mistake. And it, it's costing us, and we're not scoring enough right now to come back from it. Good luck tonight, Steve. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Smaller rink, big flag, John, as we get set for the faceoff between the Cougars and the Bengals here on uh, rink two at Fogarty Arena, the Ice House, as this will be take two of this matchup. And you heard from Alex, it's been some sweeps over the last couple of years, so the Bengals trying to reverse that trend, and they've got to find a way to score more consistently. They're one of the top scoring teams in Class 2A, but scoring for both these teams really has been down of late as they've gotten into the heat of the season. And that's curious to me because they've got some of the best scorers around, uh, not this area, but the entire state. They're taking the ice here tonight, and certainly Centennial missing one of those top scorers, so that might make sense that they'd be a little down here in this individual game. But in recent games, it's a surprise. And it's gonna be interesting to see these two teams take the ice and see what is clicking tonight, because that has been an issue, you're right. You take a look at the North Northwest Suburban Conference as the Cougars have a pretty clear lead there in conference play and overall. Blaine Andover, Maple Grove. Uh, it was a uh, tough loss to Maple Grove for the Bengals in their last game that helped the Crimson out. Crimson are now a top five team in Class 2A. And so it's, again, crowded at the top, both these teams with Elk River Zimmerman and Oka on the schedule. And so things still to be decided. And then, of course, Section 5 where the Cougars have three more wins in Section 5 than anybody else. Maple Grove and Blaine both with three wins, and the Cougars already 6-0-1. It's been really exciting to watch these teams. And we saw it last year, too, how good the girls' hockey teams that we cover for North Metro are. The other one, Spring Lake Park, who also plays here at this rink, is leading the other division. So we've got the top three, in a sense, teams out there for girls' hockey in this area. And it's going to be dynamite to watch two of them go up against each other tonight. About to get ready as they break up from around Jayla O'Brien, who has been in net every single game for these Bengals. She split time last year. Coach couldn't decide who to go with. It was in every other system pretty much. This year she has locked it in. O'Brien on one side with 12 wins and unbeaten on the other. Mackie Torma, she has split time this year with McKenna Stottero, who pitched a shutout the last time against the Bengals. But Torma coming off a two goal game allowed to the Elk River Zimmerman Elk. She stopped 14 of 16 shots. She's trying to bounce back here. That was two games ago for the Cougars. Bounce back. She allowed two. Her team scored seven. So she still got the victory in that game as she has every time. And we've looked at what the Cougars did early in the season along with the Bengals. The Bengals outscored their first five opponents 33 to one. The defense was a huge part of good early starts for these Cougars and these Bengals. We're underway just after seven o'clock here at the Ice House. Torma having to watch her teammates clear it out through the stick of Backman far side. Linzer, excuse me, make that Griefenhagen tries to work it up the boards near side as the Cougars already got into the change. Nadeau. The starter for the Cougars. She's the third member of that line with Francis tonight. Nine assists for Emily Nadeau. Our first whistle to slow us down in neutral ice. Just at offsides, that puck was kind of popping up in the air and going back and forth. And someone touched it as they crossed over. So it actually looked like Centennial was carrying out the other direction at that point. But we got the whistle. Dive in for Megan McKenzie to take the draw. Working up against Maya Almick. Almick has been fun to watch. I mean, we always talk about Hughes and Linzer, but Almick's one of my favorites whenever we get a chance to check out Centennial. Griefenhagen able to just touch it to Pitlick, but in traffic, and Pitlick can't hang on to it. Puck slides all the way back out. Sakura on defense, a goal and seven assists for the Cougars. Trying to wait for some space. Pitlick back to Sakura again. She backhands it through neutral ice, quickly off the stick of Almick. She sweeps it across to Pitlick on the near side. 15 and a half minutes still to go in the first period. And we're scoreless, we're shotless so far between these two teams. Up ice flying on the near side, near side, excuse me, for Britton Fussy. 
She'll put it below the goal line. First play for either goalie, but well out of the net for Torma. Just able to slow it down. Here comes Annika Linzer. Linzer alone. Looks like she's about a head taller than even the defenders. So she slaps that one across the face of O'Brien. It skitters wide to the far side. Touched up by Brielle Fussy on the far side. Right back below the goal line. Dangles trying to move it out far side. Deanna Lemaire, another senior. No goals, nine assists. She's been a part of a lot of these games over the last four years. Big slap blocked away at the blue line. As it was sent forward by the Cougars. Finally does make its way to the goal line. Francis can't get there on a potential rebound chance. Sucks in behind the goal line. Nadeau quickly up to put some pressure on. It slides out just past Backman. She's looking to chase. Instead, it's going to be Kayla Blessy who tracks it down in the far side corner. Make it the near side corner. Cougars back there, though, to send it back. Rosenthal chasing underneath. Ramsey Parent there on the scene with her. 19 goals for Parent, 20 goals for Rosenthal. Two of the top scorers in this conference, in this section individually, and certainly leading the Bengals. Trying to hang on to possession. Comes out to the blue line where Lintner hangs on to it, moves it along the boards. Back out to the middle for Rosenthal. It's touched away. Linzer from the circle. Trying to move it out. Lintner again, staying tough with it. Dumps it down to the far side corner. Haley Berg chasing for the Cougars. Parent trying to sneak the puck away. Backman now down to help below her own goal line. There's Linzer working hard to free the puck. As again, neither team with a true shot on goal to this point. One slid across the mouth of the goal and a break by Linzer. Knocked down off the skate of Backman. That allows her to get a little bit of possession and fling the puck forward through neutral ice. All the way back down the ice. It'll go untouched for the icing. So we come back the other way with 13.24 to go here in this first period. That was a long hold in the Blaine zone, and I'm not sure they ever should have had it. That puck was tipped out uh, by Blaine, headed up the ice, and Backman decided to cut off the other player, the Blaine player, trying to chase after the puck instead of going after it herself when that forced the other defender to come all the way across the ice to try and beat Blaine in a foot race. It's not really an ideal situation. Coach Guider saw there first, looking for his 115th win. Coach Christina King, the win over Anoka in their last game, her 80th as the head coach of the Cougars. And we're inside of 13 minutes to go here in period number one. Slammed off the far side boards, Griefenhagen, just a sophomore. She was active in that game against the Bengals earlier this season. It was a 2-0 Cougar lead after one. And they were able to salt that one away. A late Monica Linzer goal in the third made it the 3-0 score. Nearly turned over. The only Cougar down on the scene was Lizzie Prado, and she almost took it away. Puck slapped up the ice, and Britton Fussy trying to chase it down. Fussy to the corner with it. Pulled out by Backman. Pushed up the ice. It goes off the stick of Prado. Down into the bangle end. Sent right back between the circles that time. Dangerous pass to try and clear. It was tapped away. Sent back in towards O'Brien. Pad save off to the left. That one clearly on the crease on the blue line shot from Haley Bird. Cougars get it back. It's Linzer skating in from the circle. Tosses it up off the left shoulder of Jayla O'Brien. We stay scoreless. A couple of moments of intrigue. Nadeau off the feed from Linzer. Got it right back to her along the goal line. Tries to tuck it in behind the pad. Came right back to her. She can play it behind the goal line. Nadeau on the scene. Cougars also working to pull it away. Up the boards it goes. Francis tries to pick it up. Out to the blue line. Backman long shot. That was deflected away before it even got to the circle. And up out of the zone. I love the phrase, moments of intrigue. We've had so few shots on goal. There hasn't been anything that seems real threatening to this point. someone to establish in zone presence. From the far side, O'Brien able to steer that one away again as Pitlick knocked it to the far side corner. Bouncing around the puck inside, Pitlick a chance at it, slapped back by Almick. Almick moves it back to the blue line and it skitters its way down towards the corner. Good job by Abby Jones on the defensive end. Nearly bounced right out in front for a Bengal chance. They'll hang on to it. Ramsey Parent 
Opportunistic near the post, got it back out in front towards Abby Jones. She slaps at it, ends up down by Parent. Back to Jones, out in front for Rosenthal from the circle along the goal line. Skates down below the net. Drags it around with her. She's watched closely by Alana Bordeaux. Taken away right off the stick of a bangle. It's Linzer coming through neutral ice. Linzer beats one defender already. Another one to beat. Going to the backhand. Slides it on O'Brien. Puck still free. Second try. Swing and a miss. Coming in hot for Emma Olsen. Senior was hunting her third goal. Now she's just after the puck behind the bangle net. Scoops out of the corner again. Olsen was on the scene once more. Bangles, though, able to move it out towards neutralize. Berg able to turn and fire back to the near side for Allman. They can reset. Ten-minute mark here of period number one. Back up the near side. Backman fires that one up into the glove. Somehow that popped up glove high, and O'Brien snaps it right back down. That was tough. She kind of stuck the stick out to get that shot away around a defender she was coming up ice, and yeah, there wasn't much room there, and she snapped one off trying to get it past O'Brien. Senior defender, Hannah Backman, four goals, 12 assists. Nifty move there. She floats back to the blue line for the faceoff. Deanna LaMare tries to control. Got it for a moment. Almick took it away. Poked at once by Francis. Down towards Nadeau. Bangles. Spring it free to the far side. LaMare sends it off in front of her bench to Paige Ondov. Ondov with goals in three of the last five games for the Bangles. Wrapped around by Francis. Back with the four check. It comes back along the goal line. Ondov was right on the spot again, and Megan McKenzie got an extra chance. Stopped once and twice by Mackie Torma. Nice to see both these goalies step up when they've been faced with some challenges. It took a little while to get shots on, but now they're coming, and that one's sitting right on the doorstep. And you called it. That was McKenzie at the end coming to poke it home. It didn't go. Yeah, Ondov, I don't think, ever really got a good look at that. She was the one that was right on the scene when it poked off the pad and sat there tantalizingly in front of Torma. Linzer tried to move that off her own stick, came right back to her skate. She had Pitlick in the zone, dumps it ahead. Pitlick picks it up at the goal line, tries to stop hard, put the puck back out in the middle. Linzer couldn't get a full swing on it. It was poked away instead by the Bengals. Looked like Ramsey Parent was just able to get a stick on that. Face off as the net came out. Kamikaze approach there. Can't score it. Take the net off its moorings. 9.08 to go here in the first period. Face off from neutralized control by the Bengals. Lauren Dristy, starting defender, moves it up the near side boards. Ends up wrapping its way past Alana Bordeaux. She'll catch up to it. Pushes it up the near side. Was trying to hit Prado to get it out of the zone. Made its way all the way to Lintner. Lintner this time can't hold it in. Slaps it right back down. Hacked at by Sarah Jinrich. Bordeaux moves it up. Linzer surrounded by four white sweaters. Takes the long shot. Gets a piece of O'Brien and sends it netward over the glass. Yeah, she just barely got that up around the shoulder area to deflect it out of play. Jinrich. Good shift for the senior. Goal, three assists. Deep shot from Linzer. Just a piece of the sweater. Christy King. She looks warm. Yeah. That one shoots up towards the glove of O'Brien again. And again, she corrals it this time off the stick of Almay. This would have been the year to circle. I mean, the Cougars certainly have been good in her time with the two of Gabby Hughes and Annika Linzer. You see that last opportunity for the Cougars. But once you get to the senior level, you expect maybe even another year from players that have been that good even since they were eighth graders. And undoubtedly a season Coach King and her staff have been excited about. It's coming to fruition here midway through. More than that, they've only got a handful of games left in the regular season. Gets late early, as Yogi Berra said, probably not talking about hockey. Well, it's winter time. That a lucky bounce goes to Altmick, and then it's poked away right off of her stick, so the Bengals make a play with Deanna LaMare there right on the spot. Puck finds its way all the way down past the Cougar goal line. Backman trying to track it down and move it back up ice. McKenzie was there to make it tough. 
Almick has to move backwards, and then slams it to Backman off the near side boards. Pitlick, Griefenhagen out on the ice as well. It's Pitlick on the far side to enter the zone, surrounded by four defenders. Pokes it through, not under control, tracks it down in the corner. Coming up on 7.15 to go here in this first quarter, first period, excuse me. Back off the boards, far side, Linzer working with Pitlick, trying to dump it back to Griefenhagen, left at the circle instead for the Bengals, and here comes Fussy. Fussy undaunted to the blue line. One defender, one player rather, off to her right. It was Parent, couldn't get it there, off the stick of Torment of the corner. Battle ensues in the corner. Eventually, Parent able to pop the puck free just a bit. Sliding back out in front, off the boards, and the Cougars corral it. Shots are 5-3 in favor of the Bengals right now. They turn it over at neutral ice again with Dristy trying to move it in the face of a change. Back down to the goal line of the Cougars. Sakura inside the net. Send it back out to Linzer who popped it forward. But again, it's Savvy Jones and the Bengals who take it in. Parent. Might have been offside. It's got it to Rosenthal. No whistle there. Rosenthal has it deep below her goal line. Makes the turn towards the net. Had Parent right there. Couldn't get the shot away. Sticks flying for the Cougars. Bordeaux to track it down in the corner. 6.05 to go here in period number one. Fired out of the zone right to Lintner off her stick. She fires it right back down for the Bengals. Francis trying to clear. Bengals will use that as a chance to get a change. Nadeau backhanded pass. Turned over. Shot on Dov, off the pads of Torma, saved to the far side corner. Paige Ondov, the senior, five goals in this season. Three of them have come over the last five games, as mentioned. Lizzie Prado poked it ahead for herself down to the corner. This is a fun first half of hockey. I mean, it's really evenly played between these two teams. You can look at shots on goal. Obviously, neither team's gotten on the board. But they're playing some even action right now. And that was actually the fourth shot on goal by the Bengals. They are trailing shots on goal five on four. I was looking at the scoreboard the wrong way. Forgot where we were for a second. The ice house. That's the ice house. The Cougars are the visitors here. As Pitlick tries to track it down. Pulled off the boards by Griefenhagen. Takes it in on two defender. Down to the goal line in that corner. Deanna Lemaire popping free with the puck. Back above her own goal line. Poked back by Griefenhagen. Has Almick out in front. Never got it to her. Peyton Parent took it away. Through neutral ice goes the younger parent. Outside the circle, stops on a dime, waiting for help. Defense makes it tougher, flies it out to the blue line. That pass back down, wraps all the way around the boards. Fussy tracking it down in the corner. Backman spinning away with it for the Cougars. At the blue line, Littner has it pop right over a stick. There to help, swept right back down by the defense of the Bengals. No rush as it was stopped by Peyton Parent again, who got back into position. Now she'll go on to the bench for a change. Blessy starting to move it into the zone. Against too many red sweaters, and it's instead Linzer who comes away with it. Cammy Rosenthal just slapped it right away from her, and then she's taken down as two players collide at center ice, just gotten away on one another, tangled up with Jenrich. Offside. That's the only whistle coming. Huge hit. Yeah, we've seen the physicality tick up just a bit before then. There was a little uh, hard hit behind the centennial goal, and now that at center ice. Alex Zappa is ringside with us tonight. Alex? Thanks, John. In the pregame, we talked about the history between these two teams. Both Gabby Rosenthal and Rams apparently have played seven games against the Centennial Cougars. In those seven games, Gabby Rosenthal has four goals, one assist, three of those goals coming in a hat trick last year on January 31st for Ramsey Parent. Her totals, one goal, three assists, two assists in that January 31st game. Gentlemen, good first period. We'll see what happens here to near the end. Three and a half left, thanks Alex, as it's up on the stick of Nadeau in past the blue line. Floats inside the circle, got it down low to the freshman Francis. In the corner, taken off of her stick. Megan McKenzie trying to secure it, moves it to Lemaire. Lemaire in from below the goal line, up to Abby Jones. Jones sweeps it ahead, strong pass, right with the stick of Ondov. Ondov with a split, Ondov untouched through the circle, stopped by Torbo. Couldn't quite get it to that backhand, John, to send it in. But a good rush for the Bengals. All she had was the tender to be after getting a move 
that put her between the two defenders, and you called it split him. Here's her finish. She tries to slide it into the five ball, but the stick was down. Even though the knees are a little separated, the stick made the save for Torment. So face off neutralize. Ramsey Parrott and Allison Pitlick there as it pops into the Cougar zone. Riefenhagen trying to work it backwards. Moving out of the zone, just 2.45 to go here in this first period. Riefenhagen, good, backhand pass. Right onto the stick of Linzer. Linzer with space, moves across the blue line, beating one defender, fires that one on O'Brien with a blocker save. It's down off the glass in the near side corner. Good job on that rush by Pitlick to stay on sides, even with a little stick handling near the blue line, kept the play alive. Lemaire flushes the puck to the near side, swept down the ice by Peyton Parent towards the Cougar bench, bouncing off the wall. Ramsey Parent flies in, picks that puck up out of nowhere. Just skated right past two defenders to get it. Maintains possession at the blue line. It's dumped back in by Tristy. From below the circle, Cougars fighting for it. Help comes from Michaela Kolner. Trying to work the puck free. And Dristy again, space to work. Defender fell down, sends it in on net. The rebound is steered down to Linzer. Yeah, they're looking for Fussy in front to deflect that in. Didn't happen. Pitlick across her own blue line. Skates past the center line and able to send it down past the goal line before she does a little pirouette. Spun that way by a defender and heads to the bench. On the far side. Out to Berg for a long shot. That's deflected down out in front. Flipped up off the boards, Berg. Chance to keep down a neutral ice. Instead, as an arm is in the air, Blessy went down. Okay. Is that Blessy or Parrott? Oh. One of the two, and it's going to be a penalty on the Cougars for the first time with a minute 27 to go. Tripping call. You're going on Berg. We've got a minute 30. We need to go figure out where you have to go. Brought Blessy down. Bengals on the power play, 22 of 71 so far this season. In tight. Stopped by Torma. This one will carry over about 30 plus seconds. Nothing happens here in the final 80. They'll have more penalty time as that one just mishandled, misplayed at the blue line. Almick trying to chase it down. Five shorthanded goals this season for the Cougars. Rosenthal to it. Minute 40 left in the penalty. Minute five, though, left in the period. Good pass through neutral ice. Comes back onto the stick of McKenzie. McKenzie outside the circle to the goal line untouched. Drops down, cycles it around to Jones. Jones to McKenzie again. She'll walk along the goal line, has her pocket picked. Backman sends it up, ban out of the zone. Chance for a moment for Nadeau to try and send it down ice. His parent inside of 50, make it inside of 45 seconds. Brings it in again. Rosenthal never got everything on that as the puck ends up fluttering down. It's a Blaine team that at 31% on the power play has been strong in this area throughout the course of the season. They were unable to score against Centennial the first time around. This is a great chance to draw first blood, but they're running out of time in the period. Lemaire at the blue line, just able to keep it in with the backhand, shoveling it back down to Jones. Jones from the high point, fires it down. Torma didn't have a good eye on that, but it was wide of the net. 14 seconds to go in the period. Puck flops out down at the feet of Peyton Parent. Slams it off the boards, looking to pass it to herself. Backman gets there first with four seconds left. Might be just enough to survive the period, and it is, but 33 seconds will remain on that power play. We'll keep an eye on that. When we come back, scoreless first period. Very spirited first period. And many more to come here from the Ice House at Fogarty Arena. It's the Bengals nothing, the Cougars nothing here as we continue with the girls hockey rivalry on North Metro TV. Viva, 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 viva,
Thanks, guys. Coach, first period that didn't see many shots, a lot of back and forth plays, zeros on the board. What do you think your team's performance? Well, I'm not real happy with our performance right now. I think uh, Centennial's out competing us. Um, when it comes to one on one battles right now, they're winning most of them. Uh, and we just got to, I mean, our awareness right now of what's going on around us, we, we're lacking. I mean, we'll get a puck and they're pinching and we have no idea. So we have to compete harder and our rink awareness right now has got to improve a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And guys, an update on Gabby Hughes at home sick with the flu. Woke up early this morning, last night feeling fine. This morning, not such a good situation. She is out tonight for this game. Back to you. Yeah, that flu can be tough. And a tough time for it for the Cougars senior forward. But plenty of hockey still to be played for her once she gets back healthy. First period, lots of action up and down the ice, John. No goals, but as we mentioned, both goaltenders had a couple of chances to be tested and really get themselves into the flow of this game. Oh, yeah, there were plenty of moments of entry throughout the first period. And I loved watching both teams capitalize on opportunities because it was a lot of good passing to set up shots. And then there were great bursts of speed to create opportunities, certainly in rush situations. Bengals will, sorry John, Bengals will have 33 seconds left on that first power play before they officially go 0 for 1. They did dominate shots on goal just by 2, 8-6 there in that first period. But up and down the ice we went. Lone period came inside the final two minutes, a lone penalty rather, came inside the final two minutes of the period. And that will carry over to period number two. Cougars and Bengals. Centennial girls hockey, well they've, Got well into their season now, but for a little more information on what makes up this team in general here in 27-2018, we present you the coaching captains for Centennial Girls Hockey. Please enjoy. nice wins and just focus on what this means for this season and uh, moving forward. Our goals and expectations are pretty high this year. We have a lot of talent, we have a lot of people working hard so I think making it to state is definitely up there. We put that behind our minds every time we step out on the ice. It's a game of becoming a family with everyone you play with and the game of hockey is ups and downs, but you learn how to become a family and get through every single thing, and I think that's the most amazing part. It is an honor, and it's a big responsibility. There's a lot of things to do, but it's nice to have the three that I have by my side. It's also a big responsibility, being the middleman between like the team and coach. I feel like I can be a reliable source for a lot of my teammates, and that's a big deal to me. Our coaches are young. They have a lot of good input. They know what it's like as teenagers to be playing hockey they were just playing hockey they have a lot of insight on that and I think they can relate to us real well. The best part would be playing with such good competition everyone pushes each other every day to get better and I mean we obviously have some really good players and it's just really fun to play with that speed. This year um, be the best teammate I can make everyone around me better and um, just help lead the team in the best way that I can. I love hockey a lot for many reasons I love the game of course the feeling of scoring goals, making assists, being there with your team to celebrate is always fun. I love the intensity and it's a good way to get your anger out after a long day. We all have played with each other for so long and we're all so comfortable with each other. We just have a blast in the locker room on the ice and I think that's a really important part. I've loved Centennial's jerseys since I was young. So getting to put on one of my own, especially with a patch this year, is a huge deal. For the last four years, I've Love putting on the jersey and going out there and skating in front of the little girls who I used to be, so that's really fun. It's just fun. Like, it's a way to get away from everything, and I don't think about school or anything going on at home, and it's just a blast to be with a bunch of girls that I'm, I love to be with. Personal goals is being the best leader I can be. As a junior captain, it's hard to get people to look up to you more than seniors, but I'm trying my hardest, and I think just being a nice leader, working hard every practice is 
That's my goal. Now being a senior, putting on that jersey is really like in perspective that every single day it's an honor to represent your high school on a varsity hockey team. I'm gonna miss putting on the jersey and listening to our pregame songs and being with the girls. But most of all, I'm gonna miss the bonding and just getting dressed every day, getting to work for something other than myself. It's kind of scary thinking that this is the last year that I'll be able to put on the jersey, so you gotta take it as it is and just not take anything for granted. We're really good. We're fast, we work as a team, and I think overall you'll just be smiling at the hard work that everyone puts in. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How did you not love him? Six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Okay, so we drowned the fire. Yep. Stirred it. Mm -hmm. Drowned it again. Mm -hmm. And now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Scoreless game here in this rivalry matchup. The Bengals have a slight edge in the last nine regular season games. That's 5-4 Bengals, John, in those last nine games. And we've seen a number of those, if not all of those, depending on uh, who's where. But again, the story between these two teams, yes, is told in the regular season, but more often than not becomes told in Section 5 later on in the year, and that's exactly where these two teams hope to end up in a final. Two of the best teams in the state, one of the best sections in the state, because you take these two, you add in Maple Grove, and there's so much intrigue, so many moments of intrigue throughout that section tournament, and you can tell we're already ready for it to be here, but we've got this regular season matchup, and this can go a long way to showing what these two teams are capable, but it's not the first year that we've had to watch these squads play a little bit shorthanded. You remember players were out for that international tournament last year, so they often meet not at full strength until they get to that section tournament. I like the way Annika Linzer has gone about her business, though, today. Again, uh, as far as the big guns go for the Cougars and the Bengals, she's on her own right now with no Gabby Hughes today, but the chances, the best chances, haven't necessarily been her scoring herself, but her driving to the net and leaving opportunities for her teammates, and that's got to continue if the Cougars are going to find a way to beat Jayla O'Brien. Absolutely, and she's got probably the best speed on the team right now, so you'll see her break out, and that's happened a couple times where she's gotten ahead of the pack, tried to make a play, but her shots have been ones that lead rebounds, so it encourages her teammates to literally follow her lead into the offensive zone and try and capitalize on rebounds if she can't put it home, which so far nobody's been able to do. It was a low-scoring 3-2-0 game through two periods last time. It ended up being a 3-0 final. We'll see if we're destined for that again today with O'Brien and Torma in net. Again, 1.5 goals against average for Mackie Torma and a 1.57 goals against average for the senior. Jayla O'Brien. Another goaltender for the Bengals. That has been a strength a number of years. You mentioned last year sharing time. And obviously, that can keep goaltenders fresh. It's not harming what the Cougars have done in that with what Stottero and Torma have done swapping time. But if you know it's going to be you in that, barring health concerns every single time, that's got to do something for your confidence and, and the way you could prepare for each and every game all season to stay ready and stay sharp. Absolutely. It was it was hard to pinpoint which of those two goaltenders was the top one a year ago. And it, most nights it didn't matter. 
because the rest of the team was so dominant that whoever was in goal did well. But when you get to those top games, when you play another top 10 team, when you play in sections, when you play in state like Blaine did, it makes a difference and you want to have someone who's ready to go. Alex Zappa standing by with the Centennial assistant coach right now. Alex? Thanks, John. Alongside Centennial Cougars assistant coach Gary Nelson. She's very creative, and we're just trying to uh, be more aggressive and uh, win battles and throw the puck at the net and hopefully get some uh, easy, cheap goals. So where you signed the first period, where are you going to make sure you in the second? Well, we got to stay more on the defensive side of the puck right now. They're, they're beating us in our high slot and getting some good shots. Um, our goalie made some nice saves, and it's a pretty even game right now. Gary, okay, thanks for your time. Yep, thanks. Gentlemen, back to you. 22 left on the power play to open up the second period for the Bengals, and they get a quick rush coming after they lost the opening draw. Megan McKenzie sits one wide of the net. Final 10 seconds. Inside on Torma. Puck is down loose, still open. Back can't sweep at it. Someone got a piece. If it was Torma, they also had some defensive help from Alana Bordeaux. Still not out of the zone. The penalty is over. Deanna Lemaire with it below the goal line. Pops it back up in front. Parent cycles it around to the far side, into traffic again. Puck still free, and that one skitters somehow just wide of the post. It seems like that's been the name of the game for Blaine so far, just missing wide on many opportunities throughout the first half, our first period, and now to start this second period. Same story, they've missed twice just off the glove side. One minute gone, and finally the Cougars do get it clear after they won the opening draw, and it came right back the other way on that power play. Rosenthal turns and flips. She's looking for the change, long shift. She'll go. Parent will stay on, giving some forecheck pressure on Hannah Backman. Pushes it up to the blue line for Linzer. Linzer tried to hit Nadeau moving into the zone. Yeah, Nadeau had leaked behind the defense. Unfortunately, she couldn't gather that as cleanly as she'd like. Just sent it down to create maybe some zone time. It pops away to the Bengals. Berg comes over to try and pressure. Out of the zone it comes, looking for Parent slapped away to Linzer. Linzer with two defenders in front. Staying wide of the circle. Stick handling down to the goal line. She's got Sakura out of the blue line. Stops it instead across the ice. Almick was waiting. That was a little wide of her. She had floated down towards the goal line. Yeah, that almost acted as a breakout pass for Blaine. Poked back again. It's dangerously in front of the net. Number of those plays in front of the net already in the first two minutes of this second period. Puck bouncing the right way for the Cougars to keep it scoreless. Nadeau pins it up with Lemaire down in the corner. Francis. Digging her way in there to try and hack away at the puck and spring it free. Puck hasn't moved yet. Nadeau doing a good job of walling it off. Finally, Francis picked it up for a second, but Lemaire brings it out. Trying to move it above her own goal line on Dom. Out to the blue line where Backman dumps it back down to Almick. Almick to Francis. Just a touch of that in between the circles. Only defenders home, and it comes out on the stick of Dristy. Takes it towards the blue line of the Cougars, taken away by Berg. Berg back up, flying on the near side. It's Olsen. Olsen pops the puck up, flutters dangerously, but well wide and over the net. Stays in the zone, though, for the Cougars. Linzer brings it off the boards, back to Bordeaux from the blue line. That was on the pads of O'Brien, but steered off the glass near side. Out to the blue line, floating to Backman. Backman will pop it back into the Bengal zone. Cougars not able to get there, down on the seat of her pants. That was Bordeaux, able to just get a piece of that, but still couldn't stop the rush. It's back out in front, comes all the way out to the blue line. Rosenthal was there, floating in between the circles. Puck never found her stick. She'll get it back at her own blue line, reverse, under the pressure from Lizzie Prado. Send it right off the bench. Now to the near side, Puck deflected and flying away off the stick of Brielle Fussy. Into the corner, Cougars trying to bring it out. Held in, Littner, they got it in front, through some traffic, Rosenthal chance at the rebound, but she was moving the wrong way. Now the puck is pinned again with 13.20 to go here in this second period, still scoreless between the Cougars, the number two team in the state in the latest rankings today, and the Bengals, the number eight team. Eight team, that is, dropping a couple of spots from number six last week. Slip down to the goal line. Abby Jones, chance to run at it. Couldn't get it. Instead, it stays still for Griefenhagen. Moves it up to Linzer. Takes a bit of contact. Couldn't hang on to the puck. Nearly did, but she will get the penalty out of it. Likely an interference coming up there. Maybe a trip. Couldn't see the official on the near side. Boris will get the signal here in a moment. It is another tripping call. 
So first power play opportunity. Just enough contact with that stick. I thought she was going to keep her feet in the first place. Ended up losing the puck. Rachel Lentner serving the penalty. First power play chance before Centennial. And they've only got nine power play goals on this season. They're sitting at 19%. For a team that has as much firepower as this does, it is a surprise to see the number at 19. They've given up 13 power play goals on this season. So the special teams not ever in their favor right there as three Cougars trying to free the puck as time just continues to cycle down. Well, it's weird. They've scored five shorthanded goals. Right. So to They're think that you'd have that many shorthanded but only manage nine power plays. Bird got it in front wide of Nadeau. Might have deflected off a of bangle. Nadeau gets it back along the goal line. Sends it around. It goes inside the stick of Lizzie Prado. She gets it right back from Francis. Nadeau hunting a deflection in front of the net as it skips out to Bird. Tries to step through and around a defender. Instead, it's walled off by Lemaire. Pops it backhanded off the boards. Berg able to get it back, but well below the goal line. Cycles down, pops it back out in front and in. Stick of Nadeau and through. Backhand feed from Berg. She stayed right with it. And it'll be the Cougars for the second time this season who strike first in the rivalry. Nicely done. It really didn't look like the power play was operating that efficiently. Then suddenly the puck pops to the front of the net. You've got a player just camped out on the doorstep in the dough, and she's able to pop it past O'Brien. Great, great goal for the Centennial to come away with here. You're absolutely right. This almost looks like it could have been an even strength goal. I mean, just nothing as far as the puck movement, but Nadeau able to set up there. Got it right past O'Brien. Berg will get at least one assist. We'll wait to see if there's another. one nothing Cougars. Still more than 11.40 to go here in this second period. Backman had the puck for a moment. Paige Ondoff took it away. Dumps it just past the blue line. Flies back over her head. Goes to Lintner. Gave the second assist to Summer Francis, her second assist of the year for Berg, her ninth helper this season. Cougars on the road. They've only played three true road games to this point. They've got one, one, and one. And excuse me, that's their last three true road games. They've been dominant at home at 9-0 and so far. But they take a lead here on the Bengals, trying to run out with Rosenthal. Two defenders, she's got Jones back inside, slides that one wide, and Jones ends up inside the cage. What was that you said, the kamikaze effect? Yep. Jones trying it again. Well, what that ends up meaning is that these players are going hard. And, you know, she was breaking, trying to catch up to the puck here. As you'll see, it slide by, hoping there'd be some kind of tip. It never came. She gets tripped up and has no way to stop herself from going into the cage. So it turns into a stick side face off against Mackie Torma. Send the puck around off the face off win for the Bengals. 10 8, they've got the shots on goal lead, but a 1 0 lead for the Cougars on the scoreboard. Nice pickup by Lindsay. They're going head to head with Gabby Hughes, or rather with Gabby Rosenthal trying to track down that puck. And Lindsay able to win the race. Berg splits two defenders. Did just maintain enough puck possession to tap it out to Nadeau. Cougars had to touch up. Francis was still in the zone. Nearly the puck was right there for Berg. Very strong with that stick, even one-handed. A couple of times now she's maintained the puck presence. Nice. Jones to the middle for Rosenthal to equalize. That was Parrott who fed her. But Rosenthal, the finish from the near side. And playing able to equalize shortly after falling behind. It's just been a couple of minutes. Just under two minutes. And you could see that developing from a mile away. See the beautiful pass. Rosenthal wastes no time wristing that one hard past Mackie Torma. Well, what did Coach Guider tell Alex before that intermission? Our ice awareness has to be better. Now Ramsey Parent going to the near side boards. 
perfectly aware of where Rosenthal could break, and she split the two defenders with the pass. Slammed home for the 21st time by Rosenthal. For Parent, her 16th assist, and a lot of those have gone to Gabby. the lone assist as we would assume so we break the seal on the scoring and it flies right back both ways as John mentioned a couple of seconds under two minutes between the goals Pitlick was already in the zone Cougars move it out have to touch up Backman will dump it down along the near side chase for Lintner to try and go track it down we gave you the stat at the beginning of the game, 6-1, and one, when Gabby Rosenthal scores. That's the Bengals' record. When she doesn't score, they're just 2-3-1, and one, so they've at least got that out of the way as far as good mojo goes. Along the near side, we'll have a penalty. Looks like another trip coming up. Went so long with some clean hockey. Now you've got Sakura sitting down for the first time tonight. It is another tripping call. Excuse me, I said Sakura. It's on Blaine. So the Bengals on the penalty kill again. They've already given up one power play goal. That one they gave up was their ninth of the season. It was just the tenth power play score. by the Cougars this year. And as we mentioned at the time, it wasn't the power play run into perfection that got the goal. Kind of a muddy goal in near the crease. Yeah, but you got to be a little bit worried, and I think if you're Morgan Ryman sitting in the penalty box right now, you're worried because you've seen that Centennial can score on the power play, and you don't want to be the player who made the mistake that puts your team down again. Bordeaux's pass deflected away by LaMare. She was trying to hit Francis. Back out to Bordeaux at the blue line. Cycling around, gets to the forehand, sent it into some traffic. It was kicked away off the skate of Lizzie Prado towards the corner. Minute four to go here in the power play. Prado sends it to the goal line. Nadeau looking for her second. Slapped at it. She was walled off by Lintner. Still holding her down and the puck. Back to the blue line it goes. Pop to the near side, Bordeaux. Tries to fire through traffic. Deflected down by Rosenthal. Linzer. Monica Linzer along the goal line. Skates back in around the net. 35 seconds to go on the power play. Backman from the circle, a bouncing puck, directed away by the right pad of O'Brien. Goldner nearly got a deflection on that one. She was the one in front, hacking at the puck as it fluttered in. Pitlick, tough work to maintain possession, comes back out to the top. That'll be Goldner, cycled back out towards the blue line, back down towards Pitlick. Lemaire trying to push her off the puck, does so, puck free. Lemaire can't sweep at it to get it out of the zone. 12 seconds to go on the power play. Linzer again, space from the circle, good angle, takes that shot that's deflected away by O'Brien. Out of the zone it goes, and that ought to do it on the penalty kill. Coming up on seven minutes to go in the second period, 1-1, back to even strength. Up the ice, Backman was calling for it. She's got space, takes the shot from the circle, and it's deflected wide by O'Brien again. Yeah, she didn't get all of that either on its way into O'Brien. Now up the other side. Chance moving in, second chance with Onda following off the little dump feed by McKenzie. It was either a feed or she just lost the puck, but it went right to Onda. It, but yeah, it worked out well, and again, that's what comes from hustling and following the player who has the puck at the lead. You see, she was trying to give it to herself, lost control, almost worked out better that way. Yet a player skating in hot with a clear look at the goal, unfortunately, couldn't beat Torma. Under seven to play, period number two. No closer to deciding this one. Each team with a goal here in the second. Came two minutes apart. That one deflected down to a knee went Griefenhagen to knock it down on its way between the circles. Picked up off the boards near side by Prado. Moves it up ice Griefenhagen. Quick skate with two defenders crashing in on her. Ends up along the boards. Trying to hand it off to Francis basically along the boards. Bengals stay tough with it. McKenzie a chance to take it away. Pops to Francis. Francis hit the circle. Griefenhagen behind. Space. Trying to fire the puck to the near side. Prado couldn't find it. Sakura wraps it around the boards. 
Riefenhagen will chase with Dristy over there on it. Pops free for the Bengals. Prado can't hang on to it. Little miscommunication with Bordeaux. Prado able to pick it up. Midst of a change for the Cougars. So it slides past a couple of Cougars who are unaware. And Lintner slams it off the boards to wrap it around. Sakura comes to take it away and does. Pushed it back down into the zone. Forced Lintner to play it again. Back out to Abby Jones. Down to an E. Jones looking to pop ahead to Omdov. Instead, it's deflected back. Ends up for Nadeau. Back it comes for Linzer. Linzer puts one defender on the deck and fires it right into the body of Jayla O'Brien, who makes the save. Good attack. Linzer continues to force the issue, going hard as the tender whenever she gets the opportunity. But she knows that's not exactly where she wanted to put that puck, and you can see it on her face afterwards. O'Brien's good. She's going to stop some tough shots, but that time she didn't really even have to move. Not much of a challenge for her when it came right down to it. But the key was she held on to it. You know, it came into her body, but being able to secure it once it gets there is tough. Ramsey Parent fires it in off Torma, blocked it away with the glove. She just kind of got a piece of that. I mean, it could have flopped right over and gotten into the goal. Luckily, it deflected high and away if you're a Centennial. Puck stopped on a dime there for Parent to pick it up again. Quick touch from Rosenthal out to Peyton Parent. Back down to Ramsey, working it down to the goal line. Chance at a backhand little sweep there for Rosenthal. Never materialized. Peyton Parent chases it down on the boards, fighting with Linzer. Pinned up there. Pitlick takes it off the boards, fires it out of the zone just as she hit the deck. Got enough on it. Dristy pushing it right back at the Cougars again. Slapped around by Blessy. Bounces back to the blue line. Nadeau trying to sweep it ahead and finally does. Not much on that backhand, but forces O'Brien to cover it up. So with 4.29 and counting here in this second period, tied at one, a draw in the Bengals zone. It's been another quick period. Yes, we've had more penalties this period than we did in the first, but overall, there have not been a ton of stoppages, offsides, icing. I think we've had, what, one icing in the whole game? If that, now that I think about now, it. Yeah, there was one. Okay. But it was all the way back, I think, in like the first five minutes of that first period. But you're right. Since then, not much. Fly up the near side for Fussy. Fussy tries to dump it back in. Ryman trying to send it down along the goal line. Back out it goes for Lintner. Lintner from the blue line. Puck hopping around. Down towards the goal line it goes. Almick skates along the goal line. Back between the circles in her own zone. Plenty of speed. Firing away. Here comes Olmick all the way down the ice in front of the net. Put it on O'Brien's right pad. Save made. Net Even, came off. Yeah, just a hair. It got bumped. Great attack by Olmick. And Centennial not afraid to head right for the net. And the only way that could have been a longer rush for Olmick was if she started basically in the locker room. She pretty much took that one the complete length of the ice. Undaunted. Olmick's done it. Linzer has done it. Just one goal to show for some of that pressure for the Cougars. Francis pokes the puck away. Nadeau has it hop over her stick and all the way up over her head. Out to Ondov at the blue line. Crosses her own blue line. Pushes it to the far side. That's Abby Jones trying to track it down. Puck is free. Jones ended up down on the deck. She's got to get out of the zone as Ondov has it slapped back at her by Backman. Puck free to neutralize. There's Linzer. Linzer. So smooth, getting around one defender, has a second in front, and that one blocked away. Either Did you see by the defender, O'Brien, or both? If she had put that in, it would have made for a magical photo. She was encircled by every white sweater on the ice. Linzer towards the bench, just able to sweep that one down. Comes back near side, Rosenthal. Almick walls her off along the boards, pokes the puck free. That gives Griefenhagen a chance to win it for the Cougars, but instead, Jones picks it up for the Bengals, flying below the goal line. Bordeaux on her hip, left it back. Puck free, springs out right to the stick of Lauren Sikora. Under 2.40 to go here in this second period. Each team scored in the first seven minutes of the frame. Sikora. Finally comes free with the puck. Pass behind to Griefenhagen. Had some trouble picking it up. She backhands it perfectly right to Pitlick. 
on the move. Pitlick has to fight for possession, does so, has Almick down deeper in the zone, doesn't see her yet, still doesn't have the puck. Whistle, no whistle, no arm. Saw an arm come up from the Cougar bench, and that fooled me, so we play on. Yeah, the fans are doing the same thing, thinking it was a holding the stick situation. Here comes Parent, takes the shot directly into the center of Torma. Saves it up with two minutes and three seconds to go here in the second. Ramsey Parent's got a little bit of that quick burst, can make people miss, end up surrounded by defenders. See that? That's the shot I was talking about when she was completely surrounded. There wasn't any other red sweater, and every player for Blaine that was on the ice was around her. And still almost found a way. Well, she did find a way to make it a dicey moment for the Bengals. Almost found a way to put it home. Lizzie Prado. Slapped it ahead. Bengals able to play it off the boards. Across their own blue line. Ryman with possession, just dumps it down. Coming up on 90 seconds to go here in period number two. Berg moves it up to Linzer. Linzer steps inside one defender. Goes parallel to the blue line for a couple of extra seconds, and that popped the puck away. Up ice, Fussy. Fussy with Berg in front of her. Help coming, Fussy flips the puck ahead. It's off the pads of Torma, but no Bengals home. That would have been an easy deflection yeah. right back in if someone had been there. I think she misjudged that. I think she wanted it in her glove, and it didn't work out that way. Prado, neutral ice. Slapped away once and twice from her. Linzer picks it up near side. Taken back by Megan McKenzie. Up ice it goes towards the Cougar end. And an icing. Hey, Look at that. Hey, we get one per period. You know, Centennial, I think, has been the, the better team at, at getting to the puck and creating turnovers and making something out of it. Not that Blaine hasn't had rushes. And, of course, they got their goal on a rush here in this second period. But I really like Centennial's hustle to the puck tonight. And I, I wonder if they know they need to step it up. Everyone needs to step up the intensity tonight being shorthanded. Now, how can they turn that into a goal as Almick? Slaps the puck back off the draw. 50 seconds to go. Players bumping down. Rosenthal and Francis goes to Almick. Almick sends it on the right side once in and out of the glove of O'Brien, and she plops that leather right back down on top of it to her left. Settle things down. Almick again on the draw. Up against Rosenthal, Bordeaux able to send it back down from the blue line. Towards the front of the net, pass ahead out behind Ramsey Parent. Yeah, well put, ahead but behind. We've had a lot of feed ahead passes, headman passes that have not been hitting the top skater in stride. And it's cost them opportunities, both sides. So it turns into an offsides to neutralize with just under 30 seconds to go. Shots are now even at 14 on that last push towards O'Brien. Bengals had a slight edge at the end of the first. Rosenthal, this time her pass to Parent, deflected by Backman. Backman to Linzer. Linzer with 20 seconds. She's walled off by Rosenthal, swept away by Deanna Lemire. Off the boards to Jones. Jones with Parent behind her, takes the shot, gloved away. Torma supremely confident reaching up for that save. Ramsey Parent's speed almost got him another offsides there, but she did a good job walking along the blue line. Ten seconds Ooh. to go. Dangerous puck ended up behind Torma. Bengals maintain. Puck goes in front. Jones ends up down on a knee. Linzer, she'll flutter this puck up. Wide, far side, off the boards. And... 1-1, we will go to the third. Each team with a goal in the period. Nadeau on the power play for the Cougars. Gabby Rosenthal answered for the Bengals. We pause back after this with the Bengals and Cougars not at one on North Metro TV. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. 
I'm a teacher. I make more. Pecorino, Campidoglio, vino rosso, vino bianco, cappuccino, rigoletto, cannaletto, sacco mano. Vaporetto, porto fino, Leonardo, Amaretto, Marco Polo, Pamigiano, Caravaggio, Allegrino. Allegretto, ma non troppo piano, piano, bardolino. Viva, 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 viva l'Italia, viva l'Italia, viva, 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 viva l'Italia che mi va. 1-1 your score after each team picks up a goal in the second period. Bengals and Cougars. And just like we knew, this one would go right down to the wire. A number of one goal finishes in this rivalry of late. We go down rinkside to Alex Zappa. Thanks, gentlemen. Alongside Centennial assistant coach Cassie Hudzinski. Two goals scored in that second period, one on each side. How do you think your team competed in that second period? Um, I think we competed well. Uh, we kind of stuck with them, as you can see, 1-1 one, one game, but uh, there's more in the tank, so we're ready for the third period. So in that third period, after watching two, what adjustments or what's your message to the team in the locker room? Uh, we just got to give it our all. We got to get tape-to-tape -tape passes. We got to get it in their offensive zone, and we got to get it out of our defensive zone. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it, Coach. Of course. Yep. Thank you. Guys, Centennial Cougars are 4-3 and three since the Rosenthal-Hughes era began during regular season games in sections. 1-1. One and one. Back to you. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty close one way or another. You, you can find a way to parse these games out. We mentioned regular season. The Bengals have a one goal or a one game edge in the last nine. It's just... You look at the Hughes and Linzer era, basically you can suffice it to say these two teams have been nip and tuck pretty much in recent memory. Same thing in the period, goals come in two minutes apart and it was the Cougars who would get on the board first, their first penalty of the game on the power play. Berg sucks down below the net, got it back out in front. Emily Nadeau, right place, right time. There have been more pressure from the Cougars that didn't turn into goals. Pressure on the other side from the Bengals. McKenzie Torma. Staying tight. And of course, Gabby Rosenthal with that second goal, or rather the second goal of the period, first goal for the Bengals. Shots on goal. Bengals still maintain the edge. They had a two shots on goal edge out of the first, now 15-14. Yeah, there's not a lot to say about these numbers because they're so even. One power play pickup for Centennial, as we talked about. Percentage-wise, that hasn't been a lot for them to get a lot of scoring on the power play, but they did here tonight. Much needed goal, and it's part of the reason we're tied right now. Bengals, Cougars tied at one apiece to be decided in the third period. Just the way you draw it up here at the Ice House. 1 1 on North Metro TV. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. To the third period we go. 1-1 one, one, your score. Cougars and Bengals. J.W. Cox alongside John Hatton. Alex Zappa is ringside for this one. The only game between these two teams left this season that were guaranteed. Of course, we've talked a lot about that. They could play again, but very even, John. Stats-wise, the way they've gone up and down the floor, we'll see what period number three has in store. Alex Zappa standing by with more. Alex? Thanks, John. Alongside Bengals assistant coach Peter McKenzie, Saw your top line getting going. Gabby Rosenthal scoring the goal, pairing on the assist. How nice is it that that line's going, going into the third? 
Yeah, it's doing a, a good job. I think we got to have a little bit more ferociousness with our sticks and have an eager to score and, and uh, kind of go after the puck more in, in low. Uh, but I think we'll do pretty well on it. I think all in all, I think if all the girls keep their energy up, we should be pretty fine. Coach, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. Gentlemen, back up to you. And we've heard energy a couple of times from a couple of different coaches. John's talked about it. That's going to be your key here. Who can find that last best burst? To pop ahead here late in the final 17 minutes. Cougars had a lead for about a minute 56. Bengals tied it up. And here we go. Bengals just five and three, by the way, since losing to Centennial earlier this season. Their wins, one in overtime, two of them by a single goal. So they've played tight in three of their five victories since then. They've also got a one goal loss in there. They've been in tight contests. Here we go to start the third. Trying to find Linzer off the stick of Francis. It pops all the way free past the blue line. Leaves it for the Bengals with Peyton Parent to bring it out. The ninth grader flying up the near side. Put it down to Ramsey. Below the blue line. Back out to Linzer. She walled Peyton Parent. Another top scorer off the punt. They fight and jockey their way down the ice. Eventually it's poked free out in front. Defense pulls it away for the Bengals. Up to Jones. Jones to Parent. Parent all alone on an island of red. Pops that one. Just across the crease, couldn't direct it towards the net. I suppose the island would have been white. It would have been a sea of red, but nobody's keeping track. Up the near side boards it goes. Who ever heard of a red sea? Exactly, Berg down below the goal line. Outside the circle, pops it back into the dough. The dough from the blue line. Flying out goes Griefenhagen. Stick handling outside the circle. Popped away as she ran into the boards. On down, she steps around Pitlick. Moves it to the blue line. Bordeaux tracking her backwards there as Ondoff slows it down. Stopped on a dime, tried to move it to the near side. Sails wide. Taken away by Maya Almick in the corner. Almick able to touch it up along the boards. Eventually the Bengals get possession back, but it deflects around it back towards Almick. Berg, can she clear? Reef and Hagen up on this near side with her. Berg to Almick. From behind her own net, flies the puck up towards Pitlick. Was that deflected? Or we'll only get our third icing of the game as it falls down past the Bengal goal line. 15.07 to go here in the contest. What a weird stat to keep track of. I mean, just because well, it's been so few that it's been easy. But normally, normally yeah. you would not pay that much attention to it. I mean, normally, you wouldn't be able to. It would be happening all the time. But... Control has been good for these two teams. and. No one has spent so long in their own zone that they felt forced into a situation like that. But Olsen. Here we go. Yeah, two in a row. Olsen nearly had a chance to catch up to that. It also nearly forced Jayla O'Brien to play it there as it just sailed one. Told you, this season, Rosenthal's got the one goal. Six and one when she scores. Seven games she scored, six games she hasn't. See if that trend can hold for the most part, just the one loss. They're already ahead of what they did the last time against the Cougars, and they were shut out. Rosenthal walks it in front of the goal line. It was nearly there, but Backman able to sweep it away. That puck's going to die. It's touched anyway. I don't think we were going to get an icing no matter what. Lemaire picks it up. Really strong presence in the offensive zone for Blaine to start this third period. Should bode well for them if they can keep it up. Lemaire after the puck off the board, she lost her edge there and flopped down to the ice for a second. Lost maybe a chance to keep some pressure on. Puck poked up, poked up rather to Francis. She never touched it. 14.08 to go. More play bouncing around neutral ice this time. That the termination of that icing. Bordeaux, aggressive. Up ice it goes just past the stick of Nadeau. 
all the way down the ice, and we shouldn't have talked about it, John, because now we can't do anything but ice the puck. I thought we were going to get out of here early, although we do need someone to take a lead at some That's point true. to end this in regulation. And again, at least from what we've seen in this third period, my money's on Blaine because they've had the offensive pressure. Centennial's the one who's been icing this puck left and right here in the third period. Even still, not under under as much duress as you would think it would take. They're just taking some chances, flying the puck out of the zone and not hitting sticks off the near side board a couple of times. Here's Lindsay. Under control, she can move it past the blue line. Keep us away from another icing for the moment. Through four defenders, touches it to Pitlick near side. See if the Cougars can match some of that zone time. Lindsay from the goal line. Touched by McKenzie, force her to push it to the near side. Pitlick had trouble getting past the referee, so she was slow to the puck, allowed the Bengals to control. Lintner reverses. Bordeaux will send it right back from whence it came, but deflected back towards her, so not cleanly around the boards. Lintner a chance from the circle. She'll dump it out past the blue line. Reverse to the near side to Golner. Golner trying to hit Linzer near the blue line. Monica can just send it down backhand towards the goal line. Griefenhagen chases. Rosenthal to it. Golner there to try and make that Sarah Jenrich, excuse me, trying to free the puck for the Cougars. Pops to Linzer. Linzer in the zone to work from the circle. Fires that one high and wide to the glove side of O'Brien. Under 13 minutes to go in regulation. Puck slides, skittering on its end all the way down the ice, and an icing in kind for the Bengals that time. Take a look at Centennial, able to snap one off, but unable to get a clean shot on. For all of this time in the zone, a limited number of quality scoring chances thus far. Face off to the stick side of O'Brien. Rosenthal catches up to that to secure it off the draw, tries to throw it off the glass, eventually on its end, the puck ends up out of the zone, right back to Rosenthal with some speed, moves past Beckman, firing on, Toma makes the save! I like it, I like the move by Rosenthal. She didn't try to get super fancy, knew she had limited time, knew she had defenders right on her backside, and so she goes for the quick shot, hoping that the keeper is expecting her to do a bunch of fancy stuff. It didn't work out. Tormo read it properly. Had her glove in great position and snagged it. Great glove from Tormo. That's an amazing sequence though for Gabby Rosenthal. She wasn't even trying to get that back necessarily. It just popped off the glass perfectly for her. And some more of that puck possession up the ice that we saw from both teams in the first two periods. Showing itself there for Rosenthal. Parent. Back to Parent. Peyton from the blue line. Tries to send it down. It's deflected by Nadeau. She's going to feel that for a little bit. Pops off the boards. Abby Jones to Parent. Back to Jones. Right in the slot. Second player there. Rosenthal hacking at it. One save by the pads of Torma. And it's deflected to the far side corner. Sakura trying to clear. Pops back down. Bordeaux checked off the puck by Abby Jones. Sakura still a chance to clear for the Cougars. Puck pops free. Almick. Off the stick of Nadeau. Finally, cleanly out of the zone by Prado, but right back in. Almick pushes it away from the blue line. Buck cycles to the near side. Up to Pitlick. Pitlick had a touch on that. Down towards the goal line. LeMaire has to chase, dumps it back down behind. In behind for Blessy. Blessy off the boards, far side for Fussy. Fussy, a little bit of a step, but right there was Linzer to wall her off. Puck ends up right back to Pitlick. Pitlick fires it across right under the stick of Francis. Francis outside the circle. She fires, and the puck settles into the heel of the glove of Jayla O'Brien. That was a little dangerous, too, because the way that O'Brien received it, she was still sliding backwards, and she didn't have control of the puck. She could slide right in there. That might be the best pass we've had in motion there at neutralized all game long. Ended up right on the stick of Francis. On the Centennial side, I'd absolutely agree. You had the nice feed on the actual goal. You're right. Runs. Absolutely right on that one. As the Cougars again slide it wide on Dom, coming back the other way with it, moving up the near side. Backman had a touch to stop on Duff's progress. And it's eventually Francis who takes it away to Lindsay. Lins are all alone. There's four white sweaters around her. Keeps the puck, maintains to the backhand of the near side circle. Back to the middle for Griefenhagen. Floating puck taken away by the Bengals. Griefenhagen never really had possession of that. Up ice, Ondoff dumps it past Backman. Berg to chase. 
Berg puts a hip into Ondov as they both hit the boards. That allows Backman to spring it free up the near side. Prado had it for a moment. Rosenthal pushed it back. Now to Backman. Backman flying in one on two. Backman fires it down. Deflected right back at her feet. At the circle. Looking to shoot. Fires it into traffic. Bouncing around at the goal line. O'Brien all the way out of the net with a player on top of her. Settles it down. Quite the skirmish. Riefenhagen and O'Brien. Into traffic. And it never left the bottom side of the glove of Jayla O'Brien. Francis, lots of space to get it to Sakura, lots of space to shoot. That one towed away by O'Brien. Might have been headed wide anyway, but she poked it for good measure. Almick. Sewn up in the corner. Nadeau, good centering pass, but it was just touched away. Better defense from Perrin. Up the ice it comes. Abby Jones flying in. Jones to the forehand. Stopped by Torma. Torma's been fantastic throughout the night. She has really been tested, and she's stepped up just about every time. Those types of goals usually pop home for the Bengals. Cougars, too, but those breaks, they have been stonewalled by these two goaltenders today. Almick lost her stick and then twirled down to the deck. Cougars are still going to come away with possession. Flies out to Nadeau. Nadeau, a little too strong for her. Poked back down by Peyton Perrin. Sakura, the puck wrapping around the board. It was iced, and we'll bring it back the other way. Heck of a sequence for the junior Maya Almick a moment ago. Look at it. Has the stick, has the stick, no longer has the stick. <laughs> and then pulled down to a knee. Under 10 minutes to play here in period number three. Berg, cross on side. Goldner in the middle. Berg floats it down below the goal line. That was Jenrich, excuse me. Popped up to the near side. Fussy. A little bit of space, Ondov in the middle, Ondov tries a one-time it while moving in, that was McKenzie, excuse me. Pops out from the corner. Cougars looking to clear it under control, they get it to Linzer. Who better to do that? Linzer, flying in, Linzer, one on two, pops it through the legs of a defender and up and in! Oh my, the goal for the Cougars to take a 2-1 lead. That was artistry, it was a thing of beauty. She's been trying all night with the direct approach. Here she goes finesse. And it works to perfection. That's a little more than a regular goal celebration. She knows. That was something special. Out of the bag of tricks of Annika Linzer. Through the legs of the defender, gets it back to herself. She doesn't have Hughes to pass to tonight, so she passes it to the All-State caliber player on the team, and that's herself. And she puts her team up top of the rivals by one. Alyssi well, Prado giving an assist. I'm pretty sure that uh, Linzer should have had an assist on that as well. I believe she passed it to herself. The old assist on your own goal. Through the legs. <laughs> that was fun. Now the Bengals have to try and bounce back again. They've tied it after being down one once already. They did it within two minutes. See if the Cougars can hang on to the lead a little longer. Plenty of time to go in this game in a one-goal contest. Almick slaps it away. LeMaire settles it back down. Far side it goes for Griefenhagen. I know we've got the boys game on Thursday for the rivalry matchup, but I think the number one play of the week is already wrapped up. Yeah, we'll see what we can get the rest of the way. Uh, we might not see something better than that all year. Back from the circles, Linzer. Pops it ahead to Nadeau. Tristy. Rosenthal popped off the puck. Couple of senior 15s going at it right there is Linzer. Slowed the progress of Rosenthal. Up the near side boards. Buck pinned up by four players. Linzer trying to rake it away from underneath the skates of a couple of Bengals. It pops up instead, heads back down the ice. Nadeau with Francis under control. Nope, just dumps. She'll chase towards the bench. 
Dangles turn it over with no pressure there. Francis into Olsen flying off the bench. She tries to backhand it back to Francis. Pops off the boards. Almick can take it. Almick back down to Olsen. Back to Almick. Almick will fire through traffic. O'Brien supremely confident with the glove. Seemed like Centennial repeatedly was trying to drop it back to someone, but the defenders were never really up across the blue line throughout this play. They were watching from neutral ice, so it limited the number of people who could get to those no-look passes that were dumped back. Bengals had chances to keep that from even happening amongst the change and just mm -hmm. turned it over. Now they will fly it out of the zone with Britton Fussy. Fussy to Omdahm. She'll take it in. Omdahm tries to turn the sharp corner, ends up below the net. Still a one-goal game with Lemaire from the blue line to Ondov outside the circle. Stick handling, trying to get around Olsen, just poked away. Olsen, can she drag it out? She does. Olsen tried the backhand pass up to the far side for Prado. Prado sends it down to get the Cougars another change. Under 6.20 to go. I wonder, as we get down the stretch here, if Centennial's mindset changes much now that they've got a one-goal lead. How do they approach these final six or so minutes? Fossey almost made that little dump dangerous as she put it off the boards. Right to the back of the net. Here comes this time Linzer again, and she tried it. That time the defense ready and poked it away. Yeah, Peyton Curran was all over that play. Bordeaux. That one was tapped away. Leonard had a chance to move that one forward. Cougars slow the progress, never out of the zone, now slapped out by Linzer. Blaine's looking a little tired to me. Some of that mental exhaustion, they've played so well, stayed so tight, now they find themselves down a goal with less than six minutes to go. See if they can ramp it back up. Lintner, defender flying into the zone, tries to force her way past Backman. Backman's played a strong game here in the rivalry. Last time in the regular season for the senior against the Bengals. Up the boards, Pitlick to Almick. Almick to the middle for Francis, just behind her. Parent finds Jones. Jones with Rosenthal offside, just couldn't handle on time. So a neutralized face off. Cougars control to Bordeaux. Touch it lightly off the boards looking for Jenrich. Taken away instead by the Bengals and Fussy. Sent right back down. We're under five minutes to play as the number two Cougars look for their 17th victory of the season against just two losses and a tie. And they try to stay unbeaten in section play with a seemingly insurmountable seven victories in section five contests. Far side, McKenzie put it back to the middle, a little in front of Ondov. Only defenders there to play. Ondov to try and get it off the boards, but it's swept away by Francis. And that one was deflected. Thought we were going to get another icing coming up, but it was deflected, so we play on. Cougars maintain it in the zone. Goes back to Berg at the blue line. Long slap shot into traffic. First hit of angle stick and taken away by Parent. Parent to Ondov, a little too strong to Backman. There's been too many of those for Blaine tonight. Passes that were a little bit too off the mark, costing them opportunities. Olsen has it popped away by Jones, and she just can't find it. Berg to Backman. Kept Jones from a break right towards Torma. Flipped up, deflected down, kept in play by the blocker save of O'Brien. Slipped down to the deck as Dristy went after it. Lintner has it paused by O'Brien, pushed off by Pitlick. Pitlick oh, held up the hand. She couldn't get her stick away. Uh, she wanted everyone to think she couldn't get her stick away, in my opinion. Either way, the Bengals able to pop it free. Rosenthal pulls it off the boards. Three defenders back. Linzer comes over to wall her off from the circle. Also help from Prado. Make that Sikora, excuse me. In along the goal line. Rosenthal trying to turn the corner. And it was poked away. Frustration play there from Rosenthal. Arm in the air penalty coming up. That was line. Parent. That's my fault. That was Parent oh. who was walking it across the goal line. She put the hip into the Cougar with three minutes to go. You see it again. Yeah, to be off the wall like that, put that hip in, it's trouble. 
So third power play opportunity of the game for the Cougars. They're one for two. Coach Guider's squad, you can go back to the first five minutes of this period, and they were dominant. We're remarking on all the icings taken by the Cougars. Never turned into a goal, and then the magic of Annika Linzer does. And now a five on four for nearly the rest of regulation here. Just about a minute differential. It's almost right on a minute. In front from Francis, Lintner picks up the puck, top of the crease. She'll take it up ice. Doesn't seem like this check-in call could have come at a worse time. Of course, Blaine does have three shorthanded goals this season, but they were just getting into a time when you start to think about pulling your goaltender. Now what do they do? Do they wait till the full two minutes tick off? Or do they go even strength with a goalie out? You're only going to have at most a minute if you can get her off ice at exactly the same time, depending on how this penalty ends. Berg from below the goal line. She'll settle with it. She assisted on the power play goal that made it 1-0 early. Nadeau scored it. She's got it now off the near side boards. Plays catch with Francis. Misplay on the pass. Chance for Dristy to pick it up. She does push it out the zone. And so if you're Centennial, there's a few things you want to do during this remaining minute on the power play. If you can get a goal, get it. You want to make sure you don't create a shorthanded opportunity for the other team, and you want to hold the puck at the end of the power play if you didn't score. There was the shorthanded chance. McKenzie off the falling feed from Rosenthal. Saved by Torma going down to the deck. Couldn't get it out of your mouth, and they did it, giving the shorthanded look. 40 seconds left to the power play. Almick slides in past Lintner. By the way, we might be tied if Gabby Rosenthal hangs on to her edge there and stays upright. Linzer fires that one through. Blocker save. Deflected away by O'Brien. Linzer floats outside the circle again. 20 seconds to go in the advantage. Backman will wrap it around. Almick from the goal line. Poke it off the boards to Backman. Near side Pitlick. Pitlick to Linzer one time with Almick crashing in. It goes wide of everybody. All right, five seconds left in the power play. You want to have this puck when it's over. Almick keeps it under a minute to play. 2-1 lead for the Cougars, trying to go 2-0 against the Bengals in the regular season. A little nifty backhand attempt at a pass there for Linzer. It's wrapped around. Icing will bring it back the other way, so more time. O'Brien has to sit in the net. Exactly. And I think Rosenthal is trying to state a case here. No, excuse me, parent. Last two power plays killed off. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I wish parents would just leave the official alone. Let him deal with the players. You got about four, three more years coming with that, too, because Peyton's just a freshman. Timeout Bengals. Or oh, did we get timeout Cougars? You can go either way at this point, I'm sure. It is timeout Cougars. But Coach Guider happy to have the opportunity defensively to draw things up. And it goes back to the same point you were making out of the penalty. They just got to find a way here to move the puck in control down the ice as quickly as possible to get that extra skater out there with O'Brien on. And Centennial's trying to stop that. So if you're Centennial, you want to keep it on the end of the ice that it's in right now. You don't have to score. Put it in the corner. Hold it up there. Create some scrums. Whatever you can do. If you can play keep away, that works too. But you would like to do your darndest to make sure Blaine doesn't even have a chance to get a shot away. Blue rays available. And you need this one in the highest definition possible. Well, maybe not. Maybe even in standard def, what Annika Linzer did for that potential game-winning goal is evident enough, but even better in high definition. It's amazing to me that hockey was watched in standard <laughs> def for so long because the difference is night and day. As great as grass sports look with HD, the clarity with which you can see the game of hockey nowadays is outstanding. John mentioned it, rivalry boys version coming up Thursday night. It's also here at the Ice House. I imagine that one's going to be on the other rink. One would think. 46 seconds to go in this one. I don't know, what's the Moose's schedule like? Out of the zone, there it goes. O'Brien inching, O'Brien heading off the ice. Puck down to the corner, last push for the Bengals. Two to one, Almick has it. In behind her own net. Bengals scrambling. That extra player not out there yet. Yeah. Puck down the ice. We've got empty net. 25 seconds to go. That's not going to make the goal line. It does make the goal line, but it was touched. No icing. Linzer trying to pull it off. Get it back out in front. Pops off the boards. 
Linzer back for it. Slaps it down towards the net with 10 seconds to go. Almick lost a glove. Here's Pitlick. Pitlick walled off. Not enough time for the Bengals. Just six seconds to go. Up ice. Deflected by Almick. She sends it forward. Deflected back to keep the empty netter away. But that's all that that'll do. The Cougars go 2-0 against the Bengals in the regular season and win this one with a game-winning dramatic goal from Annika Linzer. Your final at the Ice House, 2-1 to one Cougars as they come on the road and pick up their 17th victory of the season. Annika Linzer, the game winner, her lone goal of the game. She scored now three times against the Bengals this year en route to 20 goals, and we'll talk all about it with the victorious Cougars here on the road. 2-1 your final, the girls' version of hockey rivalry on North Metro TV. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Two to one at the ice house. The Cougars come on the road. They're now two one and one in their last four road games. None bigger than this one. And it was dicey inside the final nine minutes. The Cougars and Bengals stayed tied. Third period early going to the Bengals with a lot of pressure. Gabby Rosenthal into a big stop. Big stops from Jayla O'Brien. Keeping things solid. Maya Almick. Stick work and then no stick and then this. That was it. That was the play. The play of the period. The play of the game. And probably the play of the week next Monday. Jalo O'Brien, a couple of stops to make sure it would stay interesting. Even more so, Mackie Torma keeping things interesting. And eventually, it is Coach Christina King and her Cougars for the fourth time under her guidance, knocking off the Bengals. She's now four and six against the Bengals in her tenure here, stretching back the last five years. Cougars will move to 17, two and one. Bengals will fall to 12, five and one. Their fourth conference loss. Cougars pretty much a stranglehold on the Northwest Suburban Conference, both in their division and overall at 11-0 and one. They are now 7-0 and one in section five play, which is really the one that matters most. Alex Zappa is down standing by ice side with reaction from the Cougars. Alex? Thanks guys, alongside Mackie Torman. We'll get to Annika Linzer in a moment, but first of all, one to one game going into the third period. As a goalie, how do you embrace the pressure that comes with the game? Uh, you just gotta think to yourself, don't, you can't let it get to you. No matter what, you can't let it get to you. Put your mind in someplace else, whether it's control your rebounds or just focusing on the next shot, and that's all you can really do. With this one versus the Blaine Bengals, you not only go undefeated against them, but you're also undefeated so far in this season. Just hearing those type of statistics as a competitor and as a player, how does it make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel, though, that i got to continue working my butt off so I can stay ahead of the game and make sure I don't let up and get content. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Now I'll bring in Annika Linzer. And as someone who has never scored a meaningful goal in their hockey career, uh, when you're skating down the ice like that and you're one-on-one -on -one with the defender, uh, are you thinking about the move you're going to make or does it just kind of transpire, does it just kind of happen? It just kind of happens. I mean, all I remember is like slipping it through the girl's skate. I just kind of did it, I guess. It was a, it was a nice one. I liked Thank it. Thank you. Um, but overall, I mean, 
uh, over your career versus Blaine Bengals, seven goals, four assists. What does this rivalry mean to you? I mean, it's always fun to play them. They put up a fight every time. They always work hard and give us a fun game to play. Obviously, your counterpart, Gabby Hughes, out this game as you know, a big role player, not only in this team, but in the state of hockey and the women's game. Mm -hmm. What did you take upon yourself knowing that she was out to win this game? I mean, I think everyone kind of stepped up and rose to the occasion, and I knew I was going to be the one to like kind of let that happen and get everyone motivated to play. Going forward the rest of the way, you got snubbed in sections last year. What do you guys have to do to win this section and get to the X? I think we just need to keep playing Cougar hockey, run our systems, play the way we've been playing. Cougar hockey, I like it. Annika, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. You heard it right there. The Blame Bengals get the sweep last year. This year, it's the Cougars' tune. John, JW, back to you. And a sweet, sweet sound it is. The Cougars sweeping their way to two wins in the regular season. And, yeah, as John said, Alex talked to her about it. That's going to be your play of the week, no doubt. And it's the game winner here today. And, and, John, again, we talked about it. Who would get that last burst? Bengals came out pretty good in that third period, but it was the Cougars, Annika Linzer specifically, stepping in to make sure that they wouldn't falter without Gabby Hughes out there on the ice. When you have a player of the talent of Annika Linzer and you're shorthanded, you need someone to step up. She was trying to all night. She finally made a play that I don't know if anyone else on her team could have made in order to get that score. So uh, outstanding effort from her, and she lifts her team to a victory that was going to be tough. We knew that coming in, not having the full complement of players that they normally do. Both these teams in action later in the week. The Cougars get right back to it on Thursday, Saturday action for the Bengals. But again, coming down to the end of the season, we might see these two teams again, but, but I think even with the way this one went for the Bengals, they could be primed for another good run. They certainly have the ingredients of a team that can that can vie for a section title and try and get back to the state tournament. I agree completely. You know, one great play is what lifted Centennial over Blaine tonight. So they were in it throughout. Even after that goal, they had their chances. It just came up a, a little bit short here tonight. And I hope we get that matchup in sections. I'll be there if you'll be there. We will both be here again on Thursday. The boys' version of this matchup, Cougars and Bengals. It was the Cougars on top this time, 2-1. to one. We'll talk to you again Thursday. For Alex Appa, John Hatton, and the entire North Metro TV crew, I'm J.W. Cox. Have a great rest of your night, everybody.